stay tuned because for the next 60 minutes, Motorsports Unlimited is on the air. Hi, I'm Jerry Bryant, and these are the lovely ladies of Motorsports. And all this hour, we're going to have 60 minutes of action-packed excitement. All kinds of exciting things will happen. And we got the famous Bill Wilt, and we got all kinds of other good stuff that's happening all this hour. Motorsports Unlimited, 60 minutes of non-stop action. So let's go to the studio right now, huh? Excuse me, excuse me, if I may interrupt for just a moment. Hi, I'm Janine Lauschat, and this is the 1,084th edition of Motorsports Unlimited. Today, we're going to reintroduce you to a vehicle we showed you 17 years ago. It's called a hovercraft, and the one we looked at was the first ever made for the public, called a scat hovercraft. We thought it was pretty cool back then, but the company stopped producing them several years after this program aired. Lately, there seems to be a resurgence in interest in these interesting recreational vehicles, now made by a number of companies. So we thought it was time to remind you of their existence. Let's join our announcer at the time, Paul Schultz, as he explains. Very cool is certainly the way one would describe a vehicle that can traverse water, ground, snow or ice with equal aplomb. And that's what we've got for you today. They're called Hovercraft, and we've spent the past year and a half trying to bring this device to our audience. You see, they're made in Florida. And until recently, when a Lamont dealership opened, there were none in the region. When we finally got word that a Hovercraft was coming to the Chicago area, we wanted to be the first to tell you about this exciting new kind of motorsport. We think it was well worth the wait. Of course, it's fall and a little cold out. But everybody knows that our lovely ladies of motorsport can be depended on to bring you the latest motorsport news. Right, ladies? Right, Paul. Hi, I'm Allison Damore. I'm Kim Donahue. I'm Laura Stannis, and Paul's right on all counts. It was cold, and the hovercraft turned out to be cool. Very cool, as a matter of fact. And of course, regardless of the conditions, we'll always bring you the facts. I don't know, Allison. Bill's thinking of having us try these on the ice. Let's cross the Hep Bridge when we come to it, and first show our audience what turned out to be so much fun that we actually forgot about the temperature. And as an added bonus, we're going to answer that age-old philosophical question regarding man's place in the cosmos. Where are we? again in the absolutely beautiful community of Oakbrook Terrace and Christine this Oakbrook Terrace is really something else isn't it? Yeah it sure is. And you were the one that told me Bill if you want to do this thing with this hovercraft talk to the people at Oakbrook Terrace maybe they've got water and I said no there's no way there's no lake out there and we call them and guess what? There's water here. <laughs> there's water here it's absolutely amazing in fact it's a real pretty setting isn't it? It is it's very nice. Okay, and we've really got to thank uh, Mayor Sorello and John Valley and all the guys at uh, in Oakbrook Terrace right? And also uh, Mario Parenti. That's right. Who is what? He's the uh, head of the park district. I don't know what his exact title is. Okay, well, we thank these folks for letting us do it here today. And we also thank them for such nice warm weather. What do you think, girls? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, the girls, I'm telling you, you cannot see this on camera, but if the term chicken skin ever meant anything, that Allison? <laughs> it's cold. Okay, but we're real excited about what we're going to do here today, aren't we, Kimmy? Kimmy, we just showed you a little tape of this thing in action. This is going to be fun, isn't it? It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, do you think you're going to be able to do this? I think so. Do you think Chris is going to be, you know, she can't even drive a car. I, it looks easy enough where she can know how to do that, too. Well, let me just see what she thinks. I, I, wait a minute. Allison, go ahead. But now my question is, who do you think is going to be the best on the hovercraft? <laughs> well, it be you. Christine, what do you think? Are you going to be the best? You're, you're taking some kidding here. I'm not going to be the best, no. <laughs> no. Well, let me put it this way. Are you going to be able to do this at all? <laughs> I have my doubts. <laughs> Kimmy. You just watched the tape of this thing a little bit. Now, I want to tell you that this is a vehicle, okay? And this is a vehicle that will go over snow, ice, water, ground, and yet it has no wheels. How does it do it? Um, from what I saw, this starts up and it rides on this. It's air. It's air? Yeah. Okay, you're sure? 
I'm pretty positive. <laughs> well, we've got a guy here that can explain it. Lamar, come on in here, please. We're having a little bit of fun with your vehicle. First of all, Lamar, welcome to Motorsports Unlimited. And this is here. Lamar Harrell. Am I saying it right? And it's okay to correct the host. That's correct. Okay. And Lamar, you're from Miami. Miami, Florida. Yes. That's where we build them uh, well, and you, design you, them. you got to be absolutely in love with this weather then. <laughs> it's cold, folks. <laughs> I, I think it feels great. I'm here in shorts and short sleeve. It's been uh, real warm in Miami. This is great to me. Okay, step down to this end. You've heard what we've been talking about with the girls here about how this is a vehicle that will go over snow and ice and water and ground, and yet it doesn't have any wheels. How does it do it? And I should say, by the way, that this guy knows because he is a product designer. That's correct. I'm a product designer for SCAD Hovercraft. Right, so you should know how it works. Yes. Yeah. Explain it. Okay, we've well, got um, a two cycle engine which turns a fan. The fan creates thrust and it also creates the lift for the in, I mean for the craft. Okay, wait just a minute. Let's step around to the other side so we don't block the camera shot so the folks can see it. Go right over here. Now, we're dealing with what looks to me and our audience is pretty sophisticated with motorsports. Looks to me for all the world like a snowmobile engine. That's correct. And, and I know in Miami you guys don't know a thing about <laughs> snowmobile engines, right? No, it, it's uh, similar to a snowmobile, similar to a jet ski and also ultralight uh, aircraft. Okay, and go ahead. And how do you utilize this to make this thing go where, when there's no wheels? Okay. Well, we've got a fan in the back. Part of the air from the fan is directed out the back for thrust, and about uh, one third of the air is directed down into what we call the plenum chamber, which creates the air cushion. Okay, now wait just a minute. How is it? Oh, I see. Okay, I, folks, I'm going to have to describe this to you because there's no way we can get a camera shot of this. Uh, it looks like about the bottom third of the fan, the air doesn't go out the back. It's actually ducted down underneath the vehicle. That's correct. I wouldn't think that that would give you uh, enough air underneath there to generate enough pressure. How much air pressure do you need in order to lift this thing? Uh, what you need to lift it is the amount of weight that's in it plus the weight of the craft. But in pounds per square inch, I assume you guys must have at some point put a gauge on there to see what the PSI underneath the thing is to lift it. Uh, no, I don't have that. <laughs> okay, well, we'll get a guy that's a product designer next time and he can explain <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm only, I shouldn't put you on the spot like that when we're on camera. Uh, obviously then, this thing... This one small engine generates enough power to both lift and propel this thing forward. Sure, yes. Okay, by now you must know that the audience is hopelessly confused. They don't have it. It's real hard to describe this without actually seeing it in action. Would you agree? Yes, I agree. You need to see it going and you need to try to operate it. Okay, and we are going to teach the girls how to do this, right? Oh, yeah. I'm sure they can do it. Chris is warming up to a question. This one, by the way, can't even drive a car so and never has. So it, uh, Lamar, I'd like to know how much does the uh, craft weigh and also how big is the engine? The engine is uh, about 45 horsepower. Uh, the craft, I don't know the exact weight, but uh, the payload is about 400 pounds. Okay, uh, and it's made of, I'm guessing, fiberglass or a composite? Yeah, yeah the, uh, the deck is fiberglass, the hull is ABS, and it's injected with a flotation foam so it can't sink. Okay, we're going to find out a bunch of stuff about this as the program goes along. First of all, I should say that there are some other manufacturers, but it's, this is really, in my opinion, kind of brand new stuff. And I like to think that we on Motorsports Unlimited are breaking the story here in the Chicagoland area, if that's okay with you guys. Oh, that's great. I think people are going to be real excited about it. I think so, too. And we should also say some of the homemade craft, because I've seen some of the tape now that you guys sent me of the races and all that, and some of the homemade craft actually have two engines, one for lift and one for making the thing go forward, which seems yeah. to give them greater speed potential, but it seems to be greater pain in the neck potential. Yes, well, they do have greater speed potential because uh, they can use as much horsepower as we use, except they use it all for thrust. But uh, there's a lot more things that can go wrong, and uh, often they don't finish a race where we do. Okay, I'll tell you what I need to do is we really need to put a little piece of tape in here to show these things in action because I want to move this as we get going and instruct the girls on how to actually make this work. So you're, you're going to be really entertained by this. Watch how we do this. Kimmy, tell the camera. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Bill's right. You really need to see a little action footage to understand what Lamar is going to try to teach us. So let's take a moment to look at the opening of a popular Miami cable TV show called Hover Hello World. Hello everybody, this is Ernst Kulp along with Pete Scalzo, bringing you the motorsport of the future, Hovercraft Racing. And this is Hover World. had 
a chance to see what we're trying to learn, let's return to the lovely Terrace View Park in Oak Brook Terrace and begin class. <laughs> Now that our audience has had a chance to see a little bite of these things in action, I'm sure it doesn't make any sense and we notice that Chris has bailed out of the seat already. <laughs> yeah. You, you don't want to go first though? No. Okay, well we've got a volunteer here and the reason that we've got Kim, Kim you volunteered to be first. Yes, I did. But do you know why you're first? No, I don't. Because of what Allison said. Allison, tell her what you said. <laughs> well, Bill originally asked me if I wanted to go first and I said yes and I thought, no, 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 let's let Kim go first, because every time she goes first and I go second, I show her up. Kim, the challenge is on. Challenge. Well, it's, it's not going to happen this time. I'm more... Okay, we're going to see. At least these guys can drive, right, Chris? Yeah, right. Now, Laura, you can drive also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you shouldn't have any trouble with this either. Well, I don't know. I'm still debating it. I might for the experience, but it's really cold and the water looks <laughs> freezing. Okay. Well, if you do this right, let me get behind uh, Allison here. If you do this right, Lamar... You don't get wet, right? Uh, if you do it right. Yeah, if you, if you do it perfect, you don't get wet. Well, now wait just a minute. You've got a, a brand new shirt on here, and you just came across the water that we've got over here, and I don't see any water on you. Well, um... He um, dried it off. What? <laughs> he dried it off. Okay, so there's a chance they're going to get a little wet. Yeah, there's a large possibility. <laughs> a, a large possibility. Okay, now what we're going to do here now is we want to at least show the girls how they get air under this thing so they get the feel of that. Can we do that? Oh, yeah, no problem. Okay, what do we have to do in order to do this? Well, okay, the first thing we need to do is make sure there aren't any loose objects in the craft. Like, um... Up, <laughs> like, like high heel shoes? <laughs> like shoes that we'll have to move to the side. We don't want anything to be able to uh, go into the fan. Oh, oh, I get it. That's right, because the fan is like a big vacuum, right? Right, right. Another thing we need to do is attach the um, safety lanyard. Um, I'm going to attach it around Kim's wrist. Okay, for our audience, this is very much like a snowmobile. It's sort of a tether that if you should separate from the vehicle, it kills the ignition, correct? Yes, that's, that's very correct. Okay, and I know you don't know anything about snowmobiles because you're from Miami, right? <laughs> that's right, we don't have too many snowmobiles down there. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, Maybe we could get some sandmobiles, I don't know. Really, okay, what does she do next? Okay, the master switch is on, and um, go ahead and put your hand on the bars, Okay. and we'll start it right up. What does she have to do? Gently, gently twist the throttle. Okay, Kimmy, you get the idea? <laughs> I get it. What do you think? I like this. It's loud, but I like it. Okay, why don't you step out? Allison, show her up now. This is your uh, opportunity. No, well, come over here. You're not on mic. <laughs> That's a little hard to show up. All she did is went boom, boom, Oh, boom. you're ready to do more than that? Oh, yes. Because we've got water right out here. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wait, one, we'll wait on that for a <laughs> Oh, okay. Go ahead, Allison. Jump right on in. Kimmy, jump out, please. Go ahead and give her the run through with this thing, Lamar. Okay, uh, again, the first thing you do is check for loose objects. Nothing. We've got we got all this cleared out. Um, second thing, you need to attach the safety lanyard. And what does that do? Well, uh, if you fall out, this thing drags you along oh, with the hovercraft. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> No, Allison, what it does is this thing will pop oh, off of here and it kills the engine okay. to turn the engine off. I could just admit. By the way, you said uh, something about uh, you got to be sure there's no loose objects in here. We kind of think she's a loose object uh -uh. On, our, on this show anyway. Well, okay, We're not counting the operator. Okay, go right ahead. Okay, uh, now you uh, make sure the master switch is on. Is that on? Yeah, it's on. Okay. And you just hit the, the start? start switch. Yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> Laura, let's oh jump God. right in here. Uh, yep, take off the shoes. Allison, if you jump out. You were better. I was better, I know. It's okay. 
Okay, go ahead and just, uh, you, you've heard the ritual? Yeah. Okay, go right ahead and, uh, and get her going here. Okay. Are you excited? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is fun though. The other girls like it. What do you guys think? Is it fun? It is fun. I was better than I'm Allison though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead and start it up. Okay. All right. Master just... switched on and hit the start button. Okay, push just it push it up. Get the idea? Yeah, yeah, I think it'd be fun. Okay, jump off that way, Christine. Christine, take the shoes off. Now you're sure, Chris, you don't even know how to drive. Huh? I'm step one, I don't guarantee I'm going to step two or three. Or... I'm just gonna sit here and make fun of the rest of Go ahead and put the tether on her. Tether, tether, tether. Go ahead. Okay, now. And just hit the start switch. Well, team, Is that the only way to turn it off is by pulling out this uh, switch? Doesn't it have like uh, an on? Well, I assume if you flip the master switch off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, this is the best way, though. Oh, that's the best way? Yeah, okay, now, girls, come over here. All of you, come on up here before we close out this little segment. Any questions? Lamar, don't run away. Any questions for Lamar now on what you have to do? When Chris was accelerating, why did she turn out so much? Is it just the natural movement, or is she crooked? Uh, it, it has to do, I'm sure, with the, with the way the ground is here and all that. Yes, yeah, because it's, it's on a cushion of air. Um, if it you're wants on a, to slide down the hill. Yeah, you're always going to go, or it's always going to want to go downhill unless you're directing it with the, the rudders to go back uphill or you're correcting it with your body weight. Okay, one thing we want to say, and uh, Chuck, you're going to have to give me a high sign. How are we doing on tape here? Uh, are we okay? <laughs> okay, uh, he's not panicking yet. Should we start? I understand that you should always teach people how to do this on water because it's more forgiving rather than land. Now, do we want to do that today? Yes, that's what we want to do. The, the water is much more forgiving. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, although it is, although it is wetter, uh, but it also has a little more friction uh, when you're moving, maneuvering, more so than land, because land is a hard surface that it, uh, it's basically like an, an air hockey puck, and your world is your air hockey table. <laughs> okay, so we're, it's a little better for them to learn in the water. Yes, that's right. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do it in the water, uh, girls, all three of you together. Don't, Don't go, go away, away, folks. We'll, we'll be, be right back. back. I don't know. Kim and Allison seem eager, but to actually drive it on water, I'll have to think about this. And while I'm doing that, let's meet the girls that did the location work. Hi, I'm Chris Schutz. I'm Laura Stannis. I'm Allison Damore. And I'm Kim Donahue. Okay, I'm ready to go. Sort of. Once we got to the water, we all thought it would be a good idea if we had a little more instruction. <laughs> What do you think? She's brave? She's ready to go. Kimmy, how come you're not first? Because I'm going to show her up. Oh you, oh, you took that little dig. Laura, you don't want to go first, right? No, I'll go though. I will. I know you will. Boy, the water is blowing out. Yeah, it's cold. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. I, Allison, are you ready for this? Actually, I don't think I'm going to be doing too much right at the beginning. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to love the ride. Lamar, what we're going to do here now is you're going to take her for a little ride and kind of give her the gist of what she has to do. Then we're going to come back and each one of them is going to try it, right? Right, that's that's not like a good way to do it. Fire it up, let's go.
What are you guys screaming about? It's cold. What's cold? The water. The guy was blowing water on you? Yeah, he was. <laughs> Look at Allison. She looks like she's enjoying it. <laughs> okay, now what he's explaining to her is that she had to move her weight way up. It is very important how you balance these things with your body. And we're going to put a little piece of, uh, of instructional tape in here in the show coming up so the audience gets an understanding of that. But you fly and steer this thing as much with body English as you do with the rudder, right? I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Laura? I guess, yeah. 